Hey, it's Coach Jake here with Fast Cat Coaching. I'm coming to you live from outside in the real world, IRL. As they say on the internet, um, it's Brown County, Indiana. Um, here we have hills, for those that do not know. It's quite beautiful. Decided to uh, take the show on the road. Not too far from my house, though. But yeah, it's the first day of spring. It's gorgeous out, 60 degrees, sunny, light winds. Um, perfect day to do this video. Um, what are we going to do today? Well, as Frank has been saying, it's time to switch from base to race. That's right. We're going from base to race. One more time for those in the back. Base to race. So today we're going to talk about VO2 max intervals. Um, some of you are going to comment back what's VO2, how can you actually train VO2, can you actually increase VO2. This video is going to not be so much on the science aspect. I don't have any cool charts, any cool data. What I have is experience. Um, these are the kind of intervals that will happen when you climb in hills. Um, think of that last hill in your gravel event if you want to make the key selection or you want to go for the win. Or if you're like the last lap of a crit, you're not a sprinter and you want to attack. That four or five minute power, this is kind of what we're talking about today. Um, so when we talk about VO2 max intervals, we're talking about intervals that are usually between two and five minutes. These efforts are full gas. Now, full gas, we don't mean that the first 30 seconds of a four minute interval is a sprint. And you shouldn't also be setting your peak power performances on the first interval. You want your, all your intervals to be within probably 5% of each other. And if at any point this starts to drop, or especially when it drops below 105% of your FTP, you should stop the intervals. That means you haven't reached your capacity. You're not going to get the adaptations we're looking for anymore. Um, on the reverse side, if you're finished the intervals and you feel like you could do more, you should have either rode them harder, do an extra set, or do a couple extra intervals. Um, the idea is to slowly increase the duration of your intervals and overall interval time in zone five. So you might start with so total of 12 minutes of VO2, then you're gonna to go to 15 minutes, 18 minutes, 20, maybe up to 24 minutes. Um, these can be done by doing the old standard of like two sets of three minutes on, three minutes off, six minutes recovery between each set. That will give you 18 minutes total of VO2. Or you could do five by three minutes with three minutes between. With the VO2 max intervals, you're gonna have the one to one work to rest ratio. So if your interval is three minutes, you're gonna rest three minutes. Intervals five minutes, you're gonna rest five minutes. So today I'm gonna to walk you through a typical VO2 max interval workout, seeing that I'm just switching from base to race. I'm only gonna do a total of four by three minutes. Um, a lot of questions we always get is, should I do these on a hill or should I do them on the flats? Um, I always like people to mix them up, but also look at your races. What's your race gonna be, hilly or flat? I would do the majority of where your race is gonna be at. But I'd always try to work on the other end as well. So some people like to use hills with more resistance, but I mean, you're not always gonna be going hard uphill. You're gonna to have to go hard on the flat. So it's good to train that. So down here in Brown County, we got plenty of hills. We got plenty of flats. We can definitely mix it up. So I'll do two on the hill and two on the flats and we'll see how that goes. Okay, here we are on the bike. We'll probably do a 20 minute warm up, 15 minutes, 20 minutes warm up before we do the first effort. And we'll go from there. It's a really nice day out. A question we'll get a lot is, what's, what cadence should I do? You should do whatever cadence you want. Self-selected. Um, ideally, higher cadence is better to a point. It's more efficient. Uh, you'll save your leg muscles over doing low cadence. But you know, if you get over 80, you're doing good. Climbing might be a little harder depending on the gradient. But that's why they have those big, massive gears now. Okay, we got a warm up in. We're about 22 minutes in. Gonna do our first effort. So here we are, about to start the first uphill interval. Um, you can see the power, speed, the gradient, the lap time, and the cadence. Um, as you can see, it's not very steady to start with. But also it's going uphill, the gradient's changing, changing gears. It's okay that the uh, effort is not completely steady. You just want to stay in your power range. I was looking at staying between 
350 to 390 watts. Um, you can see many times I kind of get above that near 400 watts at times. But look at right here, it's 18, 19%. And again, like I said, cadence. I'm at 44 RPM, but I was in my easiest gear. And it felt like I was holding back some, like I could have gone harder. But I know that if I go harder now, it'll give me less later. So I'm still trying to stay in my range. I know I can go harder, but it's all about finishing the interval strong, finishing the second interval strong, and finishing that fourth and fifth and sixth interval just as good. So you are going to hold back slightly. So here we are coming up to the end of the interval and I'm going to try my best not to sprint over the top. We save those for other intervals, race, win, and moves intervals. These are just VO2 max intervals. I want to finish each interval strong. If I sprint now the last 15 to 30 seconds, that might take away from the next interval. So I try to stay consistent as much as possible in my target range. Um, you also notice the lap time. I'm going to go past just three minutes. The, the top of the hill, the good spot to turn around happened to be 3 minutes and 15 seconds. So I just, I mean, I went to 3.15. Not a big deal. So onto the flat or rolling road for the VO2 intervals here. And I'll be honest, these were no picnic. The uphill ones actually felt kind of easier. These just felt like a struggle just to kind of hold that power. You don't have the same resistance. Um, you can see the cadence, though. It's back up to 85, 90 RPM for most of the time. And you will see my facial expression toward the end. That was real. That wasn't me acting at all. I was pretty hurt on these. Again, though, you got your target to hold. You know, I, was, I was trying to do 350 to 390. Just kind of stay in that range. Um, that would make my intervals pretty consistent with each other. And that's the whole objective of this workout. I mean, even though it's full gas, I want to stay within the zone. And the power I believe I could hold for all the four intervals. You notice I did stand at the start, but it was like five seconds. I wasn't sprinting. I was just getting the power up, getting comfortable. Then I sat back down and started rolling. Okay, coming up to the last 15 seconds. And you can see the hurt face is on, but I'm just trying to give it my all, finish this interval strong. Again, I don't have enough to sprint. It's basically all I have just to hold the power range. And we're going to, you know, do another three-minute interval here. And at the end, you'll see I'll, I tried to give the thumbs up. I was going to try to talk at that time into the camera to say something, but I was so gassed. There was no way I was going to be able to say anything at that time. But I was happy to get it done. Okay, we're back. We're going to pull up our training peaks and look at the data. You know, one thing I didn't mention, I don't think I mentioned, is how you should always do a rest day before your high intensity intervals. This way you can get the most out of them. I wish there was a way we could go back and look. We can pull it up on YouTube. Wait, how can the YouTube video be done? We're in the middle of filming it. That's true. But there has been a major breakthrough in YouTube video. The videos are out even before you finish filming them. What? Nah. Here it is. Come take a look. <laughs> what the hell are you looking at? When does this happen in the video? You're looking at now. Everything that happens now is happening now. What happened to then? We just passed then. When? Just now. Go back to then. Now? Now. When? Now. We can't. Why? We just missed it. When will then be now? Soon. So here we are into training peaks. Now we can look at our data. The first thing we'll look at as you can see that my first interval did not line up with the first interval of the workout builder and that is okay unless we're doing a specific workout where you need to start your interval at a certain point that mimics a race it doesn't always have to be exact 
So by the time I got my warm up in and I got to the hill, I was a little bit further in than the workout builder had predicted. Um, but okay, then we can look at, we can easily see four intervals all spaced out properly, um, pretty much all in target and all in range at the high upper end. This one maybe got a little hard at the end, but when we look at the averages, it was pretty much spot on. So the first interval right here, we averaged 376. Intensity factor was 1.19. So again, VO2, you're looking at doing between 1.05 and 1.30. So we're pretty much at the upper end of that, which is good for a three minute interval. Um, so you look at the second interval, it was a little bit harder, 1.22. Those, that, again, that was one uphill. We pull up the third interval, which is when we started doing them on the flats. I was at 380, 1.2, which is pretty much the same I was just doing on the uphill. The fourth one again, 1.2 intensity factor. So again, it was like the same. So I paced them pretty well, because I could have maybe done another one, but I was pretty gassed at the end of the fourth interval. So I, even though I felt like I could have gone harder on the first, it's good I didn't, so I had that energy on that fourth interval. I did four by three minutes, so I had a total of 12 minutes. So my target next week is gonna be 15 minutes, and the week after that we'll target 18 minutes. Switching from base to race.